So let's bring up the Mythical Realm and demonstrate how many characters I use in my Apex team at this time and how many characters I plan to use in the future. Currently, I use Bozol, Zerida, Juggler, Gizaroth, Reen. So that makes five characters, sorry, Yusuke, six characters at this time. In addition to these six, however, I plan to use Arianrod, which would be seven, Akaya, which is eight, Sophia, which is nine, and then if I add in Oldius, that's actually 10 heroes right there from the Mythical Realm party or faction. So huge number of heroes just like that, that can all be used. In addition, Yulia is potentially usable if you have her properly enchanted, potentially 11, right? Bernhard is usable, potentially 12, Young Jessica, potentially 13. You can actually run a really, really Mythical Realm based party if you so wish. Just something I thought I would mention. So given that he's an absolute must get for me and he's only on a two hero banner, I decided that I'm going to save up my crystals instead of drawing on this Macho Lotto. So sorry Omega, you're not going to get your skin. The other reason for this decision is also because I did three summons already and the third summon gave me a random SR accessory. So that already is one of the top tier prizes, which further kills my chances of getting an early Omega. You know, unless I get extraordinarily lucky, most likely I would get Omega on the 9th or 10th summon. Maybe the rune, maybe I get Omega before the runestone or vice versa, but that's going to be very, very expensive. I've only done three summons at this time. If I were to spend the full amount to get everything, right now I only spent 150 Trinity Crystals. The full summon costs 3,950, so that's 3,800 more Trinity Crystals. And if you divide 3,800 by 88, that is the equivalent of 43 Trinity Vouchers. You can say maybe you get, because you get three additional vouchers here, you can say, I would, in order to get everything here, I have to give up 40 Trinity Vouchers. So that's kind of a rough decision. So I do have a week to make this final choice. Right. This event ends next week on Wednesday, September 23rd. So I may decide later that I want to go for all of these rewards after all. But for now, I am pausing getting the rewards because I just, I don't know, 40 vouchers or one skin. That is the choice here. That's literally it. So other than that, the only other thing that's been added with this update is a new Destiny summon banner, which is called Heroes of Destiny. Very generic name. But this banner is not very generic. It is arguably one of the best possible banners because this banner has Rachel, Lena, and Tiaris. All three characters are top tier and almost must have heroes. In terms of priority of getting the heroes, I would say Tiaris is the absolute top priority, then Rachel, then Lena. Doing a brief overview of these heroes in end game content, I would say that Tiaris is used for almost everything. Like pretty much every video you see me make nowadays has Tiaris in them. Rachel and Lana are both single target strikers and AoE attackers with high utility. In the case of Lana, she will increase magic damage by 30% and the range of all her skills increases by one. So she can launch out Heaven Sanction at one range rather than targeting herself, for example. Her AoE skills all have 4 range rather than 3. Her single target strikes all have an additional range, 3 rather than 2. Although with the single target strikes, the drawback is that the soldiers don't get the range increase. So if she attacks at 3 range, only Lena attacks, the soldiers will not. Important thing about, to note about Lena. As for Rachel, Rachel is more standard in terms of range, just 2 range. She also gets a 30% damage increase at 6 stars. At 5 stars, she is only at 20% damage increase. But more importantly is the fact that after she actively deals damage, she will dispel a buff, a dispel a debuff from all allies from 2 or 3 blocks of her. At 5 and 6 stars, it's actually 3 blocks. Before that, from 1 to 4 stars, it's 2 blocks if I recall correctly. And she also heals these allies for him. Damn it, uh, for equals to 250% of her int. That percentage increases the higher her star level. So she is a very versatile character as a result. She does great damage and she provides healing to allies and dispels some debuffs. Her skills, she has a combination 
good combination. She can bring two AoEs in Runic Void and Arcane Blast, and she can bring a whole bunch of single target strike skills such as Lightning Strike, Holy Word, and Dark Reaper. So she has very versatile options in both senses. She can also provide a gospel buff to allies. So high utility heroes for Rachel and Lena is much more single target oriented. Even though she can bring three AOE skills, which is Heaven Sanction, Black Hole, along with Blizzard, her variety of single target strike skills is absolutely crazy. Dark Reaper, her 3C, Elemental Destruction, Freeze Strike, Lightning Strike, Cleanse. That's five single target strikes right there. There's a Magic Defense Intimidate to increase ally damage against the targets since it will decrease their Magic Defense by 20%. And she also has a Summon to draw attention potentially in certain maps. So ton amazing utility for all of three heroes. In terms of end game content, the end game content is the Ancient Beckoning and Eternal Temple, of course. And in Eternal Temple, her it's determined by dominant allegiance, generally speaking, where your the characters that are of the recommended faction gets 40% stat bonus. So Lana is part of Princess Alliance and the Dark Faction, which makes her the key character, or a key character, for the Leviar fight in Eternal Temple. Rachel being part of Yeless Legends and Protagonists is good for Phoenix battle. With that said, I don't think I use my Rachel for Phoenix, but I definitely use my Lana for Leviar. And in Ancient Beckoning, the uses of these heroes are as follows. So, Nidhogg allows for Princess Alliance characters as well as Yeless Legends, if I recall correctly. And as a result, pretty much everyone uses both Lena and Rachel for Nidhogg. They're not must brings, there are alternatives, but I would say Rachel really makes this fight easy, whereas Lena is more of an optional choice. So for example, we take a look at some of the top players on my server. You can see Lena and Rachel here. For the second player, just, yeah, Lena and Rachel. For the third player, Lena and Rachel. For the fourth player, so there is Rachel, but surprisingly, there is no Lena. Okay. For the fifth player, Lena, Rachel. Six, Lena, Rachel. Seven, Lena, Rachel. And so on. Right? And also, it's worth mentioning Tiaris is also used for pretty much all of these fights. So, being Princess Alliance. So, that is Nidhogg. For Fenrir, Fenrir allows for dark characters. And this leads to Lena being in most parties, but she is not required because there's a lot of other dark characters like Rene, for example. So the top score has Lena. The second score does not have Lena. Okay. The third score has Lena. The fourth one, Lena. The fifth one, Lena. The sixth one, no Lena. The seventh one, no Lena. So you can see, Lena is not a required character, but if you have her built, she is pretty commonly used. So that's the second one, Fenrir. And then the third battle where these characters are part of the recommended faction for Ancient Beckoning is Hugin and Munin. Hugin and Munin allows for protagonist characters, which Rachel and Tiaris are both part of. Rachel, however, is not a recommended hero here at all. Tiaris is. So you see Tiaris pretty much being brought for every single fight as a result. Okay. And so that pretty much includes it. So once more, Rachel is only used for one of these battles, which is Nidhogg, but she's almost a must bring if you try to aim for a top score. She makes life easier, much, much easier. Fenrir, you can bring Lena, and Lena is nice to have, but not required. Sorry, Nidhogg as well also uses Lena. So Lena's used in two fights, Rachel's used in one, and Tiaris is used in both Nidhogg and Hugin and Munin. Last but not least, also worth mentioning is for dragons, I don't know if it matters, but for dragons, specifically the ice dragon, ice dragon requires ranged attackers, so Lana, Rachel, Luna are all great against the ice dragon. Okay. Once again, you don't need them per se, but all three do very, very well in that fight. And that was the last point I wanted to raise, so thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful to you overall. 
I mean, my overall conclusion of this banner is you must draw on it if you're missing one of these three heroes. If you have all three, then it's a waste to draw. You're better off saving your Trinity Vouchers, as usual. And with that, with that final point, Nitro out.